What? Mm-hmm. So it was written on a beetle. In the beetle. So- so oh, I've it. seen this. Oh my this gosh. Is the what? Whoa. This is intriguing. The grandchildren of Joseph Smith and why they were fooled by fake Brazilian gold plates? Is that what I'm going to be calling <laughs> that this is podcast? A wild that is the title. perfect title. So on the gravestone, it says he is the reincarnation of Hiram Smith. That's what it says. Can, can oh, we highlight just how bizarre this is for a moment? He was a follower of someone who reported that they have the golden plates. They have translated part of the sealed portion down in Brazil. Don, Don, <laughs> what is it like being Don Bradley dating chicks and taking him to go see crazy sealed portion website graveyard that Joseph yeah. Smith the, the, the dream man? The what? Yes. Don, you can take the me dream there. Line? What's the dreamland? <laughs> what did you just say, Don? This blew my mind. You said that there's still there's grandchildren of Joseph Smith around right now. Great grandchildren. Great. There would have not long, not that long ago, there would have been gra- living grandchildren of Joseph Smith. Whoa. Okay. So in, in 2023, there are, there are definitely multiple living great-grandchildren. And as of at least the late 90s, if not into the 2000s, there were living grandchildren. So, so for a guy who died, who was born in 1805, died in 1844, how does he still have It seems living, impossible, living but it's true. great-grandchildren close to two centuries oh, later, right? Yeah. So the, here's how it happens, okay? So we all know... Joseph Smith's son, Joseph Smith III, is anti-polygamy, right? He's the leader of an anti-polygamy church, and yet he actually has three wives. Now, he doesn't have them all at the same time, okay? But he has he that would be bad. three wives. That would be bad, yeah. right? Like, But, like, yeah. Um, and if you yes, don't marry indeed, them— it would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so— uh, he married his first wife in like the 1850s, be- like based on the pictures, gorgeous, right? But she died quite young. Mm-hmm. They had like one or maybe one child, two children or something. Um, then, uh, so she died. He marries again several years later and he has more children with the second wife. So the first wife's Emmeline Griswold. I can't remember the name of the second. Um, they have children. She dies. He marries a third wife. By now, he's old, but he marries a much younger woman. He has kids again. So he has three wives in succession. He has three families. So when he dies in 1914, I believe, um, he uh, leaves behind sons by each of his three wives, right? So the one who was born when he was young, uh, and then, which is Fred... Uh, Fred M. Smith, Frederick Madison Smith. And then um, like when, so so Frederick Madison Smith succeeds his father, Joseph Smith III, as president of the reorganized church. Hmm. When he dies, he's not succeeded by his son. He's succeeded by his next youngest brother from the second wife, Israel A. Smith. Hmm. When he dies, he's succeeded by the youngest brother from the youngest wife. Whoa. W. Wallace Smith. Okay. So W. Wallace Smith is the pres. He's he's a grandson of Joseph Smith, but he's the president of their church up into the 80s. Really? Uh huh. So over 150 years after the church was organized by Joseph Smith, his grandson is leading the church. Right. Their 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 branch of the church. Right? Yeah. So he appoints his son, Wallace B. Smith, or Wally, as president of their church, and he retires, W. Wallace. He, he doesn't die at that time. He retires. So the Smiths are actually a really long-lived family, except, you know, the ones who got shot, right? Yeah, um, yeah whoa. There, there was that interruption, you yeah. You know the whole thing about Joseph Smith told, if you live till you're 85, you'll see the coming of the Son of Man. So back yeah. when I was out of the church and I thought Joseph Smith was just a con man, basically, an opportunist, yeah. I thought the reason he's telling people is that he knows he's not going to live to be 85. I mean, like how many people back then lived to be 85? 
like how many of this guy's grandparents would have lived to be 85? Probably none of them. He's probably just blowing smoke here. So I looked at how old his grandparents lived to be. All four of his grandparents lived to be over 85. Really? Back in the in the early 1800s. Oh, what? wow. These are people yeah. born in like the mid 1700s and they're all living to be over 85. Whoa. So that's the kind of stock they come from, right? So, so his various descendants also tend to be long live. So Wally, uh, Wallace B. Smith gets appointed RLDS president in the early 80s. Uh, then in like the mid to later, like 96 or something, he appoints a successor who is not a member of the Smith family and he retires, right? Well, Wally's still around. I've, oh. I've encountered him at, I think it was the Restoration Studies Conference in Independence, Missouri, some conference. Um, super nice guy, right? He had been a physician before he was president of their church. He's still around. He's in his 90s. And um, there was, who were we talking about earlier? Joseph F. Oh, th so not the LDS president who was the right. son of Hiram. There is a living Joseph F. Smith who is a great grandson. Can, can we highlight prophet. just how bizarre this is for a moment? Yeah. So, so Brad, mm -hmm. you're, you're several generations deep that goes all the way back to Brother Taylor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So, so how many generations is that for you in the movement? So, honestly, as you guys are talking about this, guess what? What? My grandma, who is the great granddaughter of John Taylor, is still alive. Huh. Oh, yeah. And I'm the great, great, great grandson. Right. But right. So you're she's fourth, still kicking. Yeah, you're right. fourth generation, right. but you know someone who's connected. Yeah. So, yeah. So one difference there, right? That is amazing. But one difference is John Taylor outlives Joseph Smith by 43 years. And he's marrying Good wives point. when he's older. Good so point. However, probably she's from a later wife. Through the first wife. Really? Yeah. Oh. Very long lived again. Okay. I, I, the same thing that you're saying, yeah, like extremely long lived. Like, mm. uh, in fact, my great grandma was still alive. I met her. Awesome. So, like, awesome. there as you're talking about this, I'm like, oh, that's really like, yeah, uh, echoes of my family a little bit. But see, well. I go back to the '50s in the restoration movement. Yeah, and I'm sixth generation. Whoa! So for me, this is like these are crazy numbers to be thinking about. Yeah. yeah. For us, it's like a much more traditional number that we'd be used to. And so to hear of like just a great grandson being alive from somebody that died in 1844 is, so, a, is a wild number. Yeah. So one of Joseph Smith's um, descendants, great grandchildren who was living until recently was Fred Larson. He was the leader of a, a reorganized church offshoot called the Remnant Church of Jesus Christ. And- before he, the snuffer guys he, ended up. He just, claimed to have, I knew him, uh, he claimed to have seen God the Father in Jesus Christ, like his oh. great-grandfather. Uh -huh. right? And then this living Joseph F. Smith, whom you've met and we I corresponded met. with, yep. yeah, um, he, for a few years, he was a follower of someone who reported that they have the golden plates they have translated part of the sealed portion down in Brazil. Yeah. Whoa, what? Brazilian golden plates? So before this all happened, he actually came to one of our region conferences and just gave a testimony and it was really nice. It was a cool thing to meet somebody so connected back to Joseph. Like yeah. it was really interesting. And Dude. then this story comes out and it's like kind of mind blowing. So anyways, mm -hmm. go ahead, Don. So this guy down in Brazil, his name's Mauricio Berger. He's some sort of LDS convert, I think, when he was really young. And he just started claiming that he had the golden plates and he's got, he has people who are like his witnesses oh, of his plates. Where did he say he found these? From the angel Raphael. That, really? That was the claim. That was the claim. Yeah. Now you can get his sealed portion, the part that he has put out so far on Amazon. Seriously. Just so you know. Yeah. Dude, I'm looking this up. And <laughs> and first off, I'm also asking, when are you writing his book on his lost 116 pages? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, or, but you have looked into it, actually, haven't you? Yeah. 
Yeah, it this. became a big thing within some of the uh, independent groups that broke away from when it wasn't Community of Christ. It was the RDL, RD, LDS Church. Yeah. And this, when this was blowing up in Brazil, it was a very big deal for them. Yeah. Huh. So this Joseph F. Smith really threw his weight behind the um, this claim of the Golden Plates. Brother Berger. He's also got, does he have the sort of Laban? I think, no, he has the sort of Laban because this Joseph F. Smith, actually, the first I heard of all this was somehow I read somewhere that there was a descendant of Joseph F. Smith who said that he had handled the sort of Laban down in Brazil. I, I, I hadn't heard the sort of Laban. I heard about the interpreters, but what I heard was they had them, but then they got legitimately smashed. Well, what? okay, so what happened from what I had read was that Mauricio Berger got angry with the Lord or the angel. Uh oh. And he actually took one of oh, the interpreters and he threw it. Oh no. And broke it. Okay. And so. Um, and this is how he lost the 116 pages that you're going to bring back <laughs> that Cardin was talking about. I am loving this. I am not going to bed. So, so like, where, what the heck? So where where is this coming from? His idea that like like of like breaking the interpreter. So some of his followers, I think Joseph F. Smith was one of them. Like, were some of his supporters at least? They were like, "What? How can we follow a guy who says that he like right. took one of the interpreters and smashed it?" Okay. Well, I think I know what's going on in the story here. Yeah. So. The interpreters, what are they? I and mean, they've been around for many thousands of years, yeah. right? They are stones where uh, the, in the Book of Ether, in the Book of Mormon, the brother of Jared goes up on this mountaintop while they're being led on an exodus. The Lord is leading them in a, his presence is leading them in a cloud. And what, what, is, what does this sound like? Well, this is the there biblical you go. exodus, okay. right? Okay. And so he goes up, the Lord leads him up on the sacred mountaintop, Mount Shalom. It's a parallel to Mount Sinai. And on that mountaintop, you know, on, on Sinai, the uh, Moses had had over time two sets of stone tablets, right? And on the first set, the Lord had written on it. The Lord had given him the stone tablets and written on them with his finger. And in the second set, Moses himself made the stone tablets, brought them to the Lord, and he wrote on them with his finger. So the the commandments, the Ten Commandments. These are actually stones. These tablets are stones touched by the finger of God. Mm. Well, what does Moses do when he gets upset with the children of Israel, when he comes down from the mountain? He and yeets those commandments. What? He yeets those commandments. Yeets them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, he breaks Oh, the I was stone, waiting for you to right? repeat it. <laughs> no, you got to say it. Don, we're, we're- He yeets those commandments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And it came to pass. He did yeet those commandments. He doth yeet them. Um, so um, after he yeeted these commandments, um, like the Lord gives him the replacement set, right? So we are in the Ark of the Covenant. They put the broken stone tablets, got it touched, and the ones that weren't broken. So Mauricio Berger is really basically claiming he's like Moses. That's what he's really saying, ah, right? God had touched these stones that the brother of Jared had, these two stones up in the mountaintop, just like he touched the, gold, the the stone tablets on Sinai. And then Mauricio Berger is playing the part of Moses. He gets upset, mm -hmm. and so he throws the stone that God had touched and breaks it. So they have one broken stone and one unbroken stone. So, so the question is, how did the story come about? Did he just deliberately think... I'm going to be like Moses, like I'm going to break this. Or did he accidentally break it? And then he's like, how do I explain this? Well, I know it's like I'm Moses. Right? Uh -huh. Dude, and, and so this whole conversation started, you talking about how Joseph Smith has living grandchildren or great grandchildren to right. this day, still around in right. several different of the Mormon sects. OK, um, because you had spoken to a cowboy poet who remembered holding a torch to burn the buildings when Johnston's army entered the Salt Lake Valley with Brigham Young? Right. Just re Dude. repeat that one, because I want to make sure okay. that I got that one. Dude. Right. So like 20 years ago, there was this cowboy poet. He lived, I believe he lived in Springville. I don't remember the guy's name, but he came to speak at the Springville Library, and I thought, this is cool. So I went, and afterward, 
he was talking to some of us and he said that he had been born when his father was pretty old, like 70 or something. Right? Okay. And he uh, actually must have been older than that. But um, this was definitely in the 2000s. Um, but he said that his father, when Johnston's army marched into the Salt Lake Valley in 1856 or 1857, Brigham Young had told the people, we are not giving our farms and fields and houses and all our hard work to our enemies again. If they want to take this stuff, like we will destroy it before we will let them take it. We need to let them know that. So as the army marched down the main street in Salt Lake, Brigham had had the people stand by their property with torches to let the army know that if they, as soon as they tried to take it, they would torch their own property. So this guy's dad, when he was 17, he was tasked with holding the torch there uh, to do this. And because he uh, had his son in his really old age, he was able to tell the son the story and the son lived to be really old. And so, you know, like over a century and a half after this happened, I talked to the guy whose father uh -huh. had done this. So Dude. I was just one step away from that event. Dude. I think how these plates are, are faked is important to talk about. And, and Don's an expert on that as oh, well. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Dude, I, keep I going. You, gotta, you, know, I, you don't see me pressing stop. <laughs> you know what uh -huh. I'm saying? Keep well, going. Dude, this is I, fascinating I, stuff. I just want to say, too, like, like, because I have a number of dear friends that are part of the independent branches out in Missouri, and they saw right through this. Okay, so they weren't fooled at all. It, it did fool a handful. Mm -hmm. It clearly fooled this great grandson of, of Joseph Smith, but it, it, there was a, you know, the vast majority of those groups from the independent branches saw right through and, it. And so. so, like, he probably was able to fool some of these people because they wanted so badly to have this yeah. connection. In hope yeah, of it, what's to come. Yeah. Yeah. So, Carden. Okay, yeah, hit. You want to look something up? Yeah, sure. Hit me, bro. I'll so, do it. So, Mauricio, okay, M A U M A U R I C I O. Okay. Burger, B E R G E R. Okay. okay. Anthon, A N T H O N. Transcript. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is sounding good. I'm getting Hoffman vibes, but just with a better tan. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. So, go to images. Here it is. It's called indisputable evidence that Mauricio Berger's golden plates were fabricated. Church's warning to the so-called anthem transcripts. Ooh, this is some savage findings that I'm getting right here on Google. Where do you want me to go to images? Images of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Images. Which one do you want me to pull up, bro? Actually, let's see here. Which one do you want me to pull up? Side by side. I'm thinking there should be some. Okay. Let's check. Dude, you guys get to see how we operate in real time here. Welcome to the jungle. You know, which one you want me to pull up, dog? Oh, okay. Probably this. Is it yeah, this one? Yeah. Okay. This is on that indisputable site right there. And this is a big giant PDF. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is the There's your sword of Laban. Wait, show me the sword of Laban again. Yeah, dude. Um, okay, I'll put this up on the screen so everybody can see you looking <laughs> yeah. through here. Oh, dude. Is this it? Exhibit A, Hoffman's Anthon Scrant Tramp. Hoffman forged the Anthon Scrant Transcript, too? No, no, no. There's the authentic one above. Okay. Oh. So, so scroll up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, well, you got to go back and image, tell us. The colored image is the character's document. Okay, you can talk straight into this if you want to, dog. Actually, go back. Go back to your spot and tell us what's going on. Wow, this is crazy. This right. is way cooler. <laughs> that I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, dude, this is wild. <laughs> so what's going on here? So this guy, Mauricio Berger, he presents his plates to other people, and they've got engraved. They look gold. They're golden, and they've got engraved characters on them. So on the back, there are characters that are from the Anthon transcript, right? Which yeah. we know is like characters from the golden plates, except. Not the real Anthon transcript, the Mark Hoffman forgery oh. of the Anthon transcripts. So that's that's what you're looking at. So put here. that back up, Carton. Okay, here we go. Right here, dude. The whole audience gets to see it, man. So so what you're looking at here, so all the way over on the left, you have Mark Hoffman's Anthon transcript. In the second image, 
you have things from the red close up boxed of, middle. Right, you have a right, right. You have a close up of part of uh, Mark Hoffman's anthem transcript, and then all the way over Cardin to the um, on the right side, the image there. Um, you've got the f faked and forged. You, you've got the an, forged a plates picture from, from Brazil. Br Mauricio Berger's plates. Yeah. Where exactly it shows matching. the exact, not only the same characters, in the exact same sequence. Oh, man. So, so what defenders... So, Cardin, these, scoot yeah, over scoot to the... Scoot that over to the right a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. That right-hand side Exhibit is Exhibit 1C, plates. Brazil plates, yeah. Yeah, it's so, a perfect match, those right. characters. So what defenders of these plates have said is, well, yes, these characters match the Mark Hoffman forgery... But not all of the characters on these plates, new gold plates, are from the Mark Hoffman forgeries. Well, how many do you need? Like, yeah, just right? to be clear, like, when you have an anachronism in a photo, like when you have a photo of Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln holding up a cell phone, you don't say, well, the entire photo is true except for the cell phone part. Like, <laughs> you know. Well, then what do you say about horses in the Book of Mormon? Because I have yet to see any horses or goats or wild goats. I wonder Kurloms and Kumams. Uh, another plug for the <laughs> recently found uh, horses in Mesoamerica. Yeah. Um, but by the way, go back to okay. the image. Yeah. And okay. then scroll upward. Upward. Okay. Um, on this and I'm scrolling upward. So that's the actual Anthem transcript. Allegedly. Wow. Okay. Jeez, man. This Not the Hoffman incredible. forgery. Wow, this is intriguing. So I want to make sure that I, I, I what on earth, wh what am I going to call this show? <laughs> the grandchildren of Joseph Smith and why they were fooled by fake Brazilian gold plates. Is that what I'm going to be calling <laughs> that this is podcast? That is a wild title. Perfect title. Is, uh, this sounds like or, a host or, or, problem. Or it could be like uh, <laughs> jo Joseph Smith's great grandson wields the sword of Laban, and the, in, Brazil. Ooh, in Brazil, in Brazil. Like I, I any, oh I feel go like, back to the sword of Laban. Actually, that was cool. Okay, I feel like right now Maury needs to come out with the genetic test papers and say <laughs> the Brazilian golden plates. <laughs> They're not yours! Ah! And then everybody just starts going wild, you know? Like, this is crazy. So did this guy get adherence? And did he start, like, a Brazilian New Age Mormon branch? Or what? It it got adherence uh, early from some of the groups in Missouri that some of the different break-off restoration groups in Missouri, that, sort of that faded. They, they're not still following that. So okay, well, I, I'm, I'm sure he still has some followers, but but the Joseph Smith great grandson who had been supporting him, Joseph F. Smith, he did not leave. He's by the way, he's a really nice guy. Yes, um, he did not leave following Mauricio Berger's like uh, gold plates because the forged Anthem transcript characters were on it. He left because Mauricio Berger decided he needed to be ordained a high priest. And in some of these, well, I mean, you guys don't ordain high priests. We right? don't. So like, yeah, we don't. Like in some of the smaller. Hey, that might be an upgrade, dog. Their talks are super boring. <laughs> like, <an> <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> they just kidding, dude. <laughs> Keep going. You're not supposed to laugh at that, Don. <laughs> Keep going. I'm an elder, but like, yeah. uh, so um, the. Um, uh, what was I saying? On? So, oh yeah. Yeah. So because so he Joseph F. Be, Smith, yeah. this Joseph F. Smith, um, did not support the doctrine of there being high priests, then when Mauricio Berger was like, "Hey, I've had a revelation. I'm supposed to be ordained high priest. We're supposed to ordain high priests," he was like, "No, I can't accept this," and so he bailed out. Wow. Now, Mauricio Berger also has had witnesses of his golden plates. So how many people yeah. are still and following some, him? Some of the witnesses have laughed. Some of the witnesses have denied their testimony, said that they were fooled. Oh, man. So, so, so how, how many people are we talking here? Because, because that's what actually happens when you don't have the real, real thing. <laughs> I, don't, I yeah. don't know if I have a number for you, Cardin. Like within the independent branches, because they're, like, they get together for a joint conference, but they're not... Um, we got to go to this conference. They're not centralized in that formally of a way. So it's hard for me to say how many 
you know, but early on, early on, my understanding is they would like live stream stuff from Brazil and like 10,000 people would watch. Would they show off this sort of Laban also? Yeah, like their know. artifacts? I don't know. So when you say the independent, this is so intriguing. Yeah. This is so cool. So when you say you, that you just want to hold the sort of Laban, don't you? of yeah. course, <laughs> I absolutely Actually, do. All yeah. do. I already have Zach Thompson has it. It was made by the Weta Workshop for this upcoming movie that they're <laughs> well, doing. Well, then you take that sick. one and you fight Brazil. Yeah, seriously, ah, dude. There we seriously. go. How this goes. So, so riddle me this: when you say the independent branches have a conference, are you kind of saying that, like, for example, Starbucks? They don't have a principal competitor. Their competitor is the amalgamation of all of the smaller local coffee shops, right? Yeah. So. Like, okay, so the Brighamite sect, us, we have this big massive conference where ideally we'd like to think that all 16 million are tuning in, but in reality it's probably only like four or five. But either way, millions of us tune into this general conference, right? You guys are sporting probably 30,000, the RLDS, probably I think a quarter of a million or yeah. something like that, right? And we're well organized, we're centralized, we have yeah. leadership. But there's all these other yeah. independent ones that kind of just meet like the competitors of Starbucks. They kind of just meet in their own conference where like, 10 or 20 different independent branches kind of just team up and have a conference. Is that what you're saying happens? Yeah, you got it. Obviously I'm not, I'm not associated with them. Like I've, yeah, I've yeah. been out at some independent book of Mormon symposiums that they've had, but yeah, that's basically what they've done. They've recently ordained a quorum of 12. That's fairly new. That's within the last five years. What? So they, they do have apostles. Oh, uh, Gary Whiting, uh, Patrick McKay are wonderful men that I know that are, oh. are apostles within that, that, that branch of the restoration. So oh, interesting. So, yeah, we have to go there. That would be sick. We, we also, have to go. Well, they also, have uh, they have a Book of Mormon symposium every spring. You guys should totally come. I've I've presented at a couple of them. Dude, that would be a blast. W d oh, what, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. And wow. Okay. Just, okay. One one more thing on the plates. I I'm just thinking about the people who were like, uh, who bought into this. And one of the things that I think may have assisted is, um. I believe, if correct me if I'm wrong on this, Mauricio published the sealed portion online and you can still mm -hmm. read it. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing that I think these people who are wanting Where, where can I get this? Where can I get from this? From the Book of Mormon. Just like you can get witnessing miracles <laughs> on, on Amazon. And, you or can the get lost this, 116 pages. On Amazon. You can also you you can can get, get the lost six, 116 pages and the sealed portion. Not necessarily with equal degrees. So of if I go to is it a package deal on Amazon? <laughs> is this, this is like but yeah, it's on Amazon. And so like I feel like some of the people who are taking this are like hey, literally look up sealed portion. They right? want the sealed up. portion of the plates, yeah. right? I, I, okay. And so they're like, I mean, hey, hoping that this is a real thing. You know? Sure, exactly. Who, who's the author? I look up. Is it you Mauricio? Got it. No, it's right there. It it's is. right there. Okay. So oh my gosh, look at this. The that's, sealed that's portion. That's Namelka. Actually, sealed portion. Yeah, that one's there. Nemelka. Are lots of sealed portions. This that's a different sealed portion. This has a better five. advertised. Okay, wait, hold portion. on. This has is the other one on Amazon. It's on Amazon. What? I ordered it. Oh, from actually, a uh, fun story about this one that you that you just so pulled go, up. Go back. That one. Oh. The sealed portion right there. Go ahead and keep looking for the others. But okay, this sealed portion that you just pulled back. <laughs> they published it on April sixth, two thousand five. Did they? They did. Wow. And, uh, but that was just coincidental. Yeah, probably. Um, but this is Christopher Namelka, who claims to be the reincarnated Hiram Smith. You know about his grave. Oh. Yes. I've been to the grave. What? Okay. So, Chris, okay. Nam Chris Namelka. Fill me in on this. Chris this what is are you, wild. What's the grave? Chris Namelka is alive, but yeah. his tombstone is already set up in the Salt Lake City Cemetery. Okay. So there's a part of the cemetery that's the family plot of Joseph F. Smith, not the reorganized church, just independent branches, Joseph F. Smith, the Latter-day Saint prophet, Joseph F. Smith. Son of Hiram. He is buried there. There is a giant obelisk to the memory of Joseph and Hiram, even though Joseph and Hiram are buried in Illinois, in the Salt Lake City Cemetery. And by it, there's a big grave of LDS President Joseph F. Smith, uh, Latter-day Saint President Joseph Fielding Smith, his son, and other prominent members of their family. Okay? And there is a grave in the Smith family plot of the Salt Lake City Cemetery. And Cardin, you should look this up. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> what am we, I looking up? Because I'm not, on, I'm not on finding. Chases here. Yeah. I'm not finding any more Mauricio oh, oh, Berger oh, oh, sealed oh, portions. Oh, hold on. So, hold okay. On. Um, Chris Namelka. 
Tombstone, gravestone. Tombstone, gravestone. It's going to give me like stuff with like tombstone in it. Prophet Christopher Nemelko, headstone, dedicated part one. Go to images one. and you'll see it. Well, it looks like we're getting moving images right oh, here. Okay, oh, but this, yeah, the, this is obnoxious. <laughs> this okay. is his attorney doing a dedication ceremony saying how evil the LDS church is. That's that's basically what he says. Oh, so it's like Jeremy ceremony. Reynolds when he mm -hmm. got out and he but had that, the speakers the on the back of the no, no, no. But, you, but you can but be go able back to, to the find just like an image that shows just see like a still how it's image marked. Could, see yeah. how his I see Hiram there. I see Hiram there. So do you know? Do you know what's on there? No, what's on there? The the URLs for his websites on so, his gravestone. So on his gravestone. So how did he end up getting buried? Getting a grave wow. in the Joseph F. Smith family plot. So uh, Joseph F. Smith had a descendant, Ida Smith, and Ida became a follower of Chris Namelka because she read his sealed portion and believed it. And so he managed to get her to give him this part of her inheritance, which was a portion of the grave property, Smith family grave property. So on the gravestone, it says he is the reincarnation of Hiram Smith. That's what it says. I'm looking at this. It says literally in memory of the one like unto the son of man. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man having his head on a golden crown and his hand a sharp sickle. Revelation 14, 14 through 20. Hiram Smith born February 9th, 1800. Died June 27th, 1844. Christopher Namelka born December 2nd, 1961. Died blank. Translator of the sealed portion of the gold plates. www.thesealedportion.com And on the other side, it has a UR, one of his other URLs and other stuff on the other side of the gravestone. Whoa, I did not know about the URLs. So I've been to the, the grave. So I, the way I found out about this was I actually went there. Yeah. I, I, as a teenager, I had lived near this graveyard in Salt Lake when I started doing Mormon history. Yeah. Uh, and I remembered where the Joseph F. Smith family graves were. And I just happened to be up in Salt Lake. And I went and I went back to it again just to see it. And I saw this grave and I'm like, what? Yeah. It's wild. Is this that cemetery on N Street in the avenues? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to live on N Street when I was a little kid. Oh. And I would walk up past yeah. this graveyard to go to the park to yeah. throw those balsa wood airplanes off right. and see if they would float all the way down. Wow. Homecoming time. This, it, we're, okay, so I just found out three vacations I didn't know I needed to have. <laughs> okay, so the first one is, there's a gravestone I got to see next to the one about the Sphinx. Oh. You know the Joseph Smith Sphinx one? I've, In the Gilgal I've Gardens. Yeah, so I've these are, if you, have, if you have really nerdy LDS girls that you go out with, you can take them to these places in Salt Lake, right? So I, I've taken girls on dates to the Gilgal Garden. Wait. And then to see this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next episode, I want to hear all about Dawn's dates. Dawn, Dawn. <laughs> what is it like being Dawn Bradley dating chicks and taking him to go see Crazy Sealed Portion website graveyard that Joseph yeah. Smith sings? The, the, the dream mine? The what? Dawn, you can take the me dream there. mine. What's the dreamland? What? what? Dream, dream mine. You don't know about the dream mine? What's the dream mine? So, <laughs> and Salem by Spanish Fork. Is that the mine Utah where Valley? you can, where we would fill up the, uh, the, the bottles of gasoline, light them on fire and drop them down that big long mine shaft. And then mm -hmm. you'd run away and see if it would explode and come up. No. Oh, okay. So, so <laughs> My is, friends were different than your friends. So this is, <laughs> this, this is, a mine that was supposedly run by Revelation in the early 1900s. The uh, bishop of Spanish Fork at the time was having dreams that told him where to drill in this mountain to find an ancient Nephite tunnel where the ancient Nephites had had a mine there. And this was the story, right? His name was John Coyle. And he was doing this for decades and eventually other people started joining him. He had like a whole operation there. He wasn't paying anybody because he wasn't finding any gold, right? But like people were doing this because they believed in his claims to revelation. And so the church actually sent apostle James E. Talmadge, who was a geologist to check out this area. And he said, There's, this is not the right kind of rock here. There, there wouldn't be any gold. And so the church insisted that John Coyle recant his claims. And for a moment, John Coyle did because he was 
threatened with excommunication. He did not. But then he went back on that and said, no, I, I, this is all legit. And so he, <clears throat> he was excommunicated. So there is a giant tunnel that they bored into this mountain. It's the, the front of it is barred uh, shut with bars. So you can't actually go into the tunnel. I would love to go into those tunnels, right? Like, uh-huh. um, so and, what, what um, do I Google? Uh, Nephite gold. No, just put in dream, dream mine, Salem. You'd heard something like that. Uh, okay. And so then there's, there's a, oh, I've it. seen this. Oh my this gosh. This is the refinery up on, so they built a refinery. Yeah. I've been up, I've stood on top of that. Whoa. What? Okay. Now I was trespassing for what it's worth, but, um, I've stood on top of that. So that is right right around the corner from that where you can't see is the entrance, the cave entrance, the, the mine entrance. Okay? Oh, This is like right below the mine entrance. And so this is like a multi-level thing because the like the gold ore as it's processed, it has to like, it's being carried down by gravity through the different stages of the processing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why it's a multi-story thing. This is giant. So you can see it if you look up... Uh, if you're around Spanish Fork and you look up maybe to the in the direction of like the Krishna Temple, like if you're facing so the mountain is behind it, yeah. you, you'll see this up there. So you can actually you can see the Krishna Temple and the the Dream Mine right all in one shot there, oh, and wow. it just looks really cool. So. Well, I found um, well not I found but Brad Whitbeck was able to find and put in the Discord. Discord here indeed it is. Um, it looks like you can't order a book as it's out of print in anymore but mm. there is indeed the sealed portion so not, of the Mormon paper not uh, read from the housetops yeah not yeah. quite not quite maybe, not maybe, yet. maybe he's translating more and he's going to release the second yeah. edition okay so you have a copy of this yeah I have Don? this yeah Wh- and, oh uh, Cardin in the discord the top link is a scan that somebody saved oh get out of town I oh my gosh my fingers are flying in the Discord, the top link is a scan. There's a PDF. One of my friends, my assistant Cody at the radio station, he says there's not a book on earth where you can't just put dot PDF behind it and not find a PDF that somebody has scanned of it. And here it is. Oh my gosh, look at this. What do you know? The sealed book of Mormon translated by from the plates of Mormon by the gift and power of God. Oh my gosh, here it is published dude, in the Unitary Order of the Last Days LLC, Joseph Frederick Smith, president. Imagine That's Joseph, they had Joseph F. Smith we were talking about. Oh, Joseph, Smith, Joseph the Frederick, mm-hmm. gotcha. Yeah. And now, here's the, imagine yourself hearing that someone has the sealed portion, right? How tempting would it be to jump in on that? We all want that. Yeah. We mm-hmm. all read the Book of Mormon. We want this one day. Mm-hmm. We want the real thing. So, so Carl. Oh, and he had, there's his testimony. Oh my gosh, there it is. Look, look. Oh my, I got to make this a little bit smaller so you guys can see it. But no joke, look at this. Here we have the words of Moroni after its own testimony of three witnesses and testimonies of eight witnesses. You've got this is intriguing. The sealed book of Moses, chapter one. The PDF ends right there. Okay, but so, so the fun doesn't end here. Okay, these what? are not the what? these are not the only two guys to translate the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. There are at least two others. Who? Okay? Oh, I did not. So know one this. guy, Daviad Israel. I guess I'm an expert on the strangest things. I, I'm just realizing I know all this. <laughs> Don, stuff, we so are like, friends um, for life. <laughs> yeah, and the we best. are road tripping. <laughs> For the next decade, dog, and we're gonna make. We need to make a short documentary series on each one of these locations, bro. <laughs> like we need. I'm. I'm grabbing my cameras. We are going. Like you think I'm joking? I am not. I am serious as a heart attack. We're gonna get you a hot new babe girlfriend that's I super nerdy. I do want to go to Brazil. I do want to go to Brazil. Yes, let's do that. Like I'm in for that. Yeah. Oh, geez. No, but your church is poor, so we need. <laughs> to, <laughs> no, he's the one that said it. He said, you know, we're 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 poor. We need to get. We need to get a rich brand. Let's get the RL, RLDS people to find an interest and fund us. You know, they, they, they're, they're not they're, rich they either. They are in debt <laughs> deeply. Deep, deep. It, it oh, cuts, are they in debt we, deep? We, because it's dude, true. We're the rich got, branch. <laughs> we're the rich branch. That one is oh, us. Yes. Oh man, why are they so cheap about not replacing <laughs> the carpet? You know, like, if we're the rich branch, that's why we're the rich branch, Gardner. <laughs> oh, man, because of the scratchy carpet on. Give the up chapel one month of rent at that stupid City Creek Mall and let us go and make documentaries of all these places. And oh my gosh, imagine what okay. we could do. Another sealed portion, not the only other sealed portion. Yeah, okay. number three. 
Uh, what? <laughs> David Israel is the guy. I forget his actual name. I've communicated with him a little bit on Facebook. But oh, like, um, so this is a contemporary thing. Yes. He's still oh, around, yeah. Jeez, um, okay. So this guy, he started, I think he was a convert to the church when he was young. Yeah. And then he got really into like Gnosticism and learning about sort of all different religions. And so his idea was he was going to kind of like bring all the different religions and their mystical traditions together under the sort of restoration umbrella. Mm. So he started this. Is this of, the abridged Oracles of Mahanrai? That is rare? exactly it. The Oracles of Mahanrai. So think about the, you know. The brother of Jared. Joseph Smith later says, it's not in the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith later says that Brother Jared's name was Mahanrai Moriankamer. So um, Debbie at Israel purportedly translated this this um, sealed plates, right? Oh. And it's and look at that symbol on the front of them. Yeah. Wow, this yeah. is intriguing. Mm-hmm. I'll make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> Esoteric but, symbol there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's out of stock on eBay, unfortunately. So he was so. majorly into like stock. esoteric stuff. So I've yeah, I uh, think the text is online though. That you can find the text of this thing online. Okay. So basically, it switches back and forth between like, um, oh, who is it? Um, well, I guess it's the brother of Jared, Mahanrai Moyankumar, and Mor- Moroni. He kind of has writings from one and then the other. And it's it seems to me, it's been a long time since I've looked at it. It seems to me it didn't really mostly have what, the Book of Mormon says it's going to be in the last pages, which is like a history of the world from the beginning to the end with the Brother of Jared's The revelation vision, of all right? things. Yeah. But it does have, I can't remember, it has like odd, like esoteric doctrines and so on. Oh, fascinating. Um, so, so stuff so, he was putting in from his other mm-hmm. studies. So this guy, um, yeah, he had this, I mean, cult or whatever you want to call it. That's that's so strongly pejorative. But this was from a, really a historical odd sect, right? Like, phrasing. Yeah. yeah. Out in the out in the desert, okay, mm-hmm. and it was like a little commune, and he had like an extremely hot wife, who apparently was sort of shared with other members of the group, oh. and like um, whoa, and then this he, this went from being cool and esoteric <laughs> to even cooler, <laughs> <laughs> and then. And then and, and, and kind of swingy, you and then, know? Well, and he yeah. married another woman who was, like, much older than him, Hava Pratt. And she... Any relation to the obvious other yeah, Pratt? Yeah, that's one of your yes, guys' last names. So, so. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, and her first They're like, this name, one's on you. Yeah. The, the first name Hava, by the way, is the Hebrew version of the name Eve. So for whatever that's worth. Wow. Worth. But this Hava Pratt was a big-time revelator in her own right. She was having all these revelations of, like, parts of the Book of Mormon that were missing... And so on, not not like lost pages or sealed portion, but like other things that were supposedly written by the Nephites and so on. Okay, and again, the the fun doesn't end there, right? So you had this RLDS guy or RLDS offshoot. Um, I think it's the one that was published under I kid you not the name Goker Harim. You remember Goker in the Book of Mormon, right? Like, <laughs> Go, there's a Goker. In Go- the Book of Mormon? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> there's 337 proper names. It's not one of them. Oh, okay, so, so good. Because Goker- there's a family in my ward called the Gokeritz family. <laughs> really? Yeah, okay. and I was like... Oh, it's- maybe, maybe it's them. No, just kidding. Okay, yeah. <laughs> exactly. um, so G-O-K-E-R. You know, if you pronounce that G differently, like as a soft G, okay. it would be Joker. But anyway. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Ha- Harim, H-A-R-I-M. Uh-huh. And if I remember right, this guy in his sealed portion, um, he he was asked, how did you get access to the golden plates? Number four. And he said that the way he accessed the plates to translate these is he was outside and he saw uh, like a golden beetle. Like he was looking at some beetle and it had like gold and stuff on its wings. And as he looked really, really closely, he could see that they were plates. What? Mm-hmm. So it was written on a beetle. In the beetle. So it was written on the wings of this a beetle. This is like, have you guys seen on Facebook the the advertisements to like buy your wife a necklace and the entire Bible's contained in like this little, oh, little yeah, thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, Have you seen that? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. So same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. So I just clicked on this YouTube video called The Book of Remembrance First and Second Book of Achi, The Book Words of Gokur Harim 3. 
And there it is, the Book of Remembrance, oh. the first and second books of Achi. So I and believe it's the same guy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Wow. Okay. He does that. Mm-hmm. So this guy's made a video of the entire thing. It says, now behold, listen and learn a great mystery of life. You learn how to determine a godly lifestyle and a clean heart. Those of you who are in the midst of a wicked world, awake and behold the knowledge of God in the last days. Be empowered over sin and be endowed unto righteousness and oneness with God in your daily walk. So do, it's, sometimes I wonder how much of the Apocrypha should have made it into the Bible but the establishment was threatened by um, the empowerment that it gave the little guy. So it was discarded. And how much of what we consider canon is actually garbage <laughs> because the establishment liked it. And like, it just like <laughs> there's ma- some good content in the Apocrypha. Yeah. Yeah. Like there is <laughs> some really there good is. content in the Apocrypha. Yeah. So it's like, I, whoa, because I mean, a layman, could, if you told me this was the song of Solomon, just in a different translation sitting oh. on like, I don't know, some bookshelf in Barnes and Noble. I'd be like, Oh, okay. You know, now behold, listen and learn to a great mystery of life and learn how to determine a godly lifestyle and clean heart. Those of you who are in the midst of a wicked world awake and be in doubt or empower or yeah, endowed unto righteousness and oneness with God in your daily walk. Oh, daily walk. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty way of putting things. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Holy smoke. I'm doubting everything now. <laughs> I'm going to go inactive, turn to nihilism and booze, blame all of my problems on everyone else in the church, start using terms like patriarchy unironically in conversation in hopes that people like me more, but I'm really just going to chase away my friends and my family. And then once they're gone, I'm going to blame the patriarchy even more. It's going to become a vicious cycle. Get him back uh, to see me. Yeah. I, I, I get him back to, see me get him that. back to our branch. We got to so, bring Cardin back. Yeah, dude. Wow. This is crazy, man. This is absolutely nuts. Is there more, Don? Uh, the only other thing I can think of on this would be, so there was a Latter-day Saint scholar, scientist, who joined the movement of this Mauricio Berger down in really Brazil. Wait, who joined the movement? John Pratt. John oh. L. Pratt. So if you look up John Pratt, um, Look up John Pratt sealed portion, maybe. Okay. Um, you can do johnpratt.com. Oh, okay. I have heard. Johnpratt.com. Yeah. Oh, well, so, here it is. John P. Pr- oh, yeah. It's johnpratt.com. That's okay. the first thing that shows so this up. This guy, okay. he, was, he was a super nice guy. Okay? So is this he number was, five? He was an astronomer. No, this is part of the first one. Part okay. of the Mauricio. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, John Pratt, astronomer by training mostly his interest was in ancient astronomy and he wrote some really kind of wild stuff to be honest with you on the internet about like uh heavenly events like like astronomical events in the past and how those might relate to like was it a four book series maybe i'm not sure okay Um, so he wrote a lot but so john pratt actually became convinced of mauricio berger's claims so he went down to Brazil and Mauricio Berger recognized, hey, this is a guy who has a platform. He's got a website a lot of people read and so on. So he rolled out the red carpet. He let him handle all of his artifacts, the interpreters, oh, the dang. plates, the, the sword. Broken so there are pictures, Cardin, there are pictures on Google of, if you go to like images, it should show you pictures or, or actually just one of John Pratt's web pages on it. We'll show you a bunch of pictures of John Pratt holding the gold plates and like the interpreters. The interpreters so so all, where, all where do things. I look this up? What, what do I look it so, up on? So Google John Pratt sealed portion and then go to the image results. Okay. So John Pratt sealed. Um, I It just auto corrected to seaweed. So John <laughs> Pratt <laughs> sealed portion and then just do an image search. Here it goes. Is that second picture it right there? Uh, the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon? Oh, I think, I think so. Hold on. That, I'll come over to you. Okay. Here you go, brother. Here you go. There's the zoom out. Yeah. Which one of these is it, man? Oh, that's that first one is him, but that's a, that's a YouTube. Um, so that first one's him, but it's a YouTube so video. Yeah. And this is him. I don't know how many pictures he has. Oh, that looks like a legendary hippie right there. I want to go. Dude, that guy does not look that like Brazil. Pratt. This His headband. That looks like that dude straight out of an Arizona commune. Look his at that right there. His headband is awesome. The Brazilian guy is the one in the shirt and the button up. That's yeah. John Pratt. That's John Pratt, you're saying. Okay. So I, can't, I guess go to 
And then do do we need to just watch the YouTube video and just Maybe. see? The, I looked up images. And, the all, just the I'm at the all, yeah. Go there, I guess. Okay. No, that's not right. That's the actual text of the book. Yeah, that's the text of the book. Oh, is John Pratt's website still up? Uh, yeah, well, there was johnpratt.com right here, johnpratt.com. Oh, okay. Go to that website, just not that page. So let's drop off this whole thing. Okay, look at you. You're like, you're like a little hacker. Did you get into trouble in the internet <laughs> before you started doing this thing, Bob? Oh my gosh, there it is. There's the... This is intriguing. Hey, this there's is stuff from 2021. This is going to be some wild really members cool. content. Oh, yeah. yeah. Examining the gold plates. Uh -huh. Wow. Here's the conference venue. Here's there the bars of raw gold. gold. Oh, my there's gosh. There's the picture. There it is. There's the picture, picture right here. I'm opening this up in a new tab so everybody can see. Holy smoke. Look at that, dude. <laughs> Wow, man. So this brother right here claimed to have the Brazilian gold plates. No, 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 and he's no, no, no. Them? This That's, is John Pratt. This, this is, is the dude who like. Right, so the younger guy in that other picture is Mauricio Berger, who has these plates. He showed them. So this LDS author, John Pratt, goes down. He shows John Pratt these plates. He lets him handle them and examine them. So John Pratt, because he was a scientist, he actually did look at like these plates to try to assess how heavy are they, could they be a gold alloy, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not taking into account that they have the forged Hoffman characters on them, which should disqualify them yeah. no matter what. Automatic, yeah. <laughs> but John Pratt, I don't think, okay, he became such a believer in this that Mauricio Berger organized the first presidency of his church and made John Pratt his first counselor. And, and so, so Mauricio Berger oh. is this guy on the left, the good looking Brazilian guy, He's right? The Brazilian, yep. And the dude with the headbound is John Pratt, right? Who is now on this website with these uh, pictures being shown examining the plates, exactly. And there's Mauricio Berger, so, right? With him. So, okay. Mauricio Berger makes John Pratt his first counselor, and then. Not long thereafter, John Pratt catches COVID and dies. Oh, in 2021. Whoa. Uh -huh. So that's why his last articles were then. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. I So bring up I bring up the place. I don't know that he there was nothing Sorry. ever that talked about him getting like excommunicated. One would think one would if one became the first presidency of another church. I wonder if he didn't though because I think maybe his church authorities might have thought he was just really confused, you know. So if I could just pick one more bone on those those forged plates, you know, we have seven different witnesses that when they're describing the golden plates, they don't describe pictures. Is that what you're about to say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they Well, they describe the binding with the reverse D and that's not what you're seeing there at all on those plates. Ah, oh, yeah. So if you look at that, that's you have seven different eyewitnesses to the golden plates from, you know, the legit golden plates that were translated into the Book of Mormon. And they describe the binding with a reverse D. That's D just rings, yeah. the D rings. That's just a loop right there. Yeah. What's that's, a reverse D ring? How would that be a little bit different? So it goes up like this out of the plates and then curves, curves around. around. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. okay. Yeah. So, wow. So that's refuted by seven different witnesses to the golden plates from the 1830s just from the binding. Yeah. But so with Mark Hoffman being one of the known people to have written the plates, <laughs> this makes sense, right? So, so funny, okay, thing about, fair point, Brad. funny thing about the D-rings. Yeah, okay? yeah. So D-rings sometime in like early 1900s, late 1800s or something, somebody copyrighted these. They were like a new invention because they actually are like a particularly there was an old apologetic article written like a long time ago about these but like um they're like such a functional form of a ring if you need to attach things um and so they have like a special patent that was on them and so on so if joseph smith just faked like having the plates, right? Uh -huh. This is how he described them. It's amazing that he came up with this invention long before it was patented. <laughs> oh, and it was wow. patented what year? 
I like, like I think in like either the eighteen nineties or like in sometime in the nineteen hundreds. What? That's good, dude. That is good. Take that. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I've never heard that, dude. That's really really so, cool. So okay, so oh, Joseph Smith and Hunter. Okay, Carden, briefly okay, summarize. So we we just did a podcast in which we found out there are great grand no there are grandchildren and great grandchildren of Joseph Smith still cruising around in these independent sects of mormonism and that one of them was duped into believing a bunch of golden plates in Brazil were the real deal and then joining that church and all of these different groups called independent branches sometimes hold their own conference that now we must go to on vacation to check out all right <laughs> and that there's been multiple people who have claimed to translate sealed portions including the these, reincarnated Hiram Smith including yes. the reincarnated Hiram Smith all right, who also just happened to um, have this sick, awesome gravestone, right? And on top of that, there's, uh, where's this mine? Where, where, the dream where's, mine in Salem. Where's, I, I have too in many Salem, tabs Utah. open now. <laughs> I have too many tabs open now. There's a dream mine that we didn't know about where people were mining Nephite gold. Like, what's the title and, of this thing gonna and, be, well, dog? Here, here, let me let me give you the like moral of this story. Do your family history. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so much more. Okay, interesting guys, than you this think. is literally what are we gonna call this? <laughs> Joseph Smith's grandchildren, um, and the, the 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 fake Brazilian golden plates. Yeah. Well, okay. You know, just that'll work. Check us out on WordRadio.com. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't even get to the Lost Roads mine or any of that fun stuff. I, I'm go. I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. <laughs> this is just check us out on WordRadio.com. I don't know what to say. Just see ya. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us. If you haven't had a chance yet, please like this video and consider sharing with your friends or subscribing. Also, there should be a video coming up right about here or here where you can continue watching. If you want to visit us on Twitter, we're at Ward Radio Show. If you want to check us out online, we're at wardradio.com. And if you'd like to consider contributing to the program, please check us out at Midnight Mormons or at Ward Radio on Venmo. That's one of the best ways that you can contribute to the program. Either way, we're glad to have you here. Thanks for hanging out with us and always check out more on wardradio.com.